This is gonna be funny. Today we're in Jason's shop and we're going to go over on uh, different methods of hinging and different glues to use. And uh, like Jason has always said, there's no right or wrong glue. Uh, today we're going to use Gorilla Glue, yep. uh, but now it has pluses and minuses. It, so. it absolutely does. So Gorilla Glue is one method. There's there's really three main methods that people use when, when hinging on a giant scale plane. Gorilla Glue has been really popular for a number of years now. Epoxy has always been really popular because it's really strong. Uh, and then wood glue is one I really like to use. That's actually how we hinged the Dalton that has well over a thousand flights on it. And a lot of people look at me a little bit crazy yeah, when I say it, it was hinged with wood glue, but we'll go all over all that. Uh, Gorilla Glue is probably one of my least favorites. And the reason for that is the, the cleanup. Uh, yeah, it, it expands fancy. a lot and it really, it oozes everywhere. So it's still great. It makes a good bond and it holds tight. I just, I, I, the first plane I ever hinged with Gorilla Glue, I put probably too much glue in and too much water. Yeah, and there that was, was the main thing. To this day, there's probably marks still on that plane from the Gorilla Glue and that was 15 years ago. Well, so that's the plus of, with Gorilla Glue is that it does expand so it gets in all the crevices and stuff and locks it in exactly. tight. Exactly. But if it expands too much. It and, goes everywhere. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Gorilla Glue, this type of resin glue, it basically expands with water, so moisture. Mm -hmm. uh, so generally, your wood in the balsa has enough moisture to make it expand more than enough. Uh, some people put water on it ahead of time, but that's where you get rapid expansion. Yeah, I know a few expensive. people that'll put a couple drops in with the glue. Um, if yeah. you have a fresh arf that's fresh out of the plastic bags, you can you can generally uh, get away with just the moisture in the wood. This plane's been out of the bags for six, seven months now, so it's probably fairly dry. I, I would still say it's okay. You I've, still think I've it's used, okay? I have used kiln dry wood with that, okay. and it still expands okay. enough to where you don't even have to worry so uh, my recommendation would be Just never to in. use water i mean okay. i know people that do and it does yeah. help it fast and, and i use water only if i'm uh, have like a metal surface or something that doesn't have any moisture, any moisture. Yep. yeah good call yeah a, a way to around that is if you were to take a q-tip dip yeah, in a little water and just run it in and i would do that i'd do that you know probably 20 minutes before just because you don't want actual water you just want a little moisture yeah, there yeah, so exactly. so that's something we could do uh in, in prep just, for this just but. less cleanup so when it comes out because the, the bad thing is it's coming out right on the knuckle exactly yeah so so yeah so we'll uh, go ahead and start with prepping of the hinges um let's go ahead and get this side here so we've got our robart style hinges that come with the extreme flight here they're just regular old pin hinges as we discuss in the control horn uh video these have mold release on them now they are a barbed hinge you can see the barbs here, so you will get some grip, but I don't like to rely on that. I want to have as much adhesion as possible, especially with the, yeah. a gas plane that's gonna be vibrating a lot. Uh, we got a comment on the control horns where a guy said he's actually used CA on the control horns, but he admitted it was on an electric plane. Um, I wouldn't do that here with, with a giant scale plane. You know, the electric has a lot less vibration, you can get away with it, but CA is just too brittle. Yeah. So anyway, step one is... But CA, yeah, CA is gonna get brittle over age way quicker than anything else. Exactly. So step one is to get your denatured al alcohol, or if you're worried about it, like we talked about, you can use um, acetone. Yeah. So you just, you know, wet the corner of a paper towel, and you just gotta wipe it down. I don't wanna sand these hinges like we did with the control horns, because you don't wanna take the sharpness of the, of the barb away. Yeah, um, and I'm, I'm not a chemist, so I don't know, but um, on these, I probably wouldn't use uh, acetone only because I don't know what the chemical makeup is of that plastic. You might brittle it. Uh, yeah, make or, it brittle. you know, affect it a little yeah, bit. Of yeah, of course. Brittle, brittle is a good word. That's, yeah, brittle you it. heard that word here hey, first, say, folks, so this is our we're, word. We're innovators. Yeah. Anyways, might brittle be, it. make it brittle. Knock it off. Anyways, so we're just going over all the ends really quick with with uh, denatured alcohol. Yeah, them up. Pretty quick. You don't need this open anymore. Don't need that open anymore. Because you know me, I have so stuff. Of course you do. That's who you are. Okay. So, put that aside. So now, next step is you need to put a little oil on the knuckle of the hinges. So, as with everything, there are multiple, multiple, multiple hundreds of thousands of ways people like to do this. Um, I have a little jig here that's not working. Uh, I like to keep them kind of in a V, so whatever uh, oil I use or lubricant I use, it flows down. down, not onto the knuckles. If it goes on, or onto the, the hinges, if it goes onto the hinge itself, obviously just take a little more denatured alcohol, wipe it off, and you're good to go. So, uh, we'll start with my favorite. Three-in-one oil is easy with the nice applicator there. You just put a drop on, work it in, you're good. Uh, another thing people use is Red Lion Racing Two-Stroke Oil. Uh, I've seen a couple of videos on that, and in that you take a Q-tip, dab it in there, dab it on the knuckle, work it in. Now, would this be the same thing as Marvel Mister Oil? 
Uh, I know it's red. That's the only reason I saw it. Pretty close, yeah. but it's a little it's a little thicker. Well, yeah. Um, and a lot of guys have it around. You know, I mean, we yeah, are, you know we're flying two stroke gas planes, and a lot of us use this oil, so it works great. Uh, the final option is a little bit of Vaseline. Uh, Vaseline works well, or petroleum jelly works well. You, again, you use a Q-tip, and you put a little bit on the knuckle itself, and then you use a heat gun. Hit it with a heat gun, let it flow in. Well, the nice thing about that is it thickens back up, so it keeps the glue from getting in there at all, whereas the others keep the glue from sticking once in the knuckle. So yeah. they all work well. So we'll go ahead, uh, on this one, we'll go ahead and use the, um, let's go ahead and use the uh, petroleum jelly method just because there's fewer hinges on here. And we'll go to the easier ones down the road when we do the elevators and the ailerons. All right. So, like I said, just take a little bit of a uh, Q tip here. I say I use I, I use this almost all the time on them. Okay. Because I have no you know clue of different ways, uh, but I also use like a toothpick. Yeah. To so run it in there. Yeah. But I never thought about the heat gun. Heat gun's a great idea. Yeah. The nice thing is, is it uh, you know won't run one until you heat it, so you don't have yeah. to worry about it going onto the onto the barbs or anything like that. So you just want to get a good coating up here. There we go. And I didn't make my little jig here wide enough. To why they're flipping over on us. I think if we flipped over too, it'd be a little taller. It would, you're Maybe right. You are correct. You're so smart. What well, stuff I do, man? I make yeah. jigs. Uh, me too, apparently. Yeah, you yeah. <laughs> See? Jigs that I never thought of, see. There we go. So we got a little bit of a petroleum jelly all the way around there. We take our heat gun. I like to do it with the attachment on just so it's a little more focused heat so I don't burn my fingers. Yeah. Bend it a little bit, put it on high. Keep it over your um, wax paper here just because it is going to drip. Yeah, float in real nice. There you go. Now float in. Now you turn off your gun. Set it aside here. Just work a little bit to get a good coating in there. And set it in your jig. And you're good. So, cool. so we're going to do this again. Go ahead. Slide that over. I like to put wax paper down just so it doesn't get on my building surface or anything like that. Same thing again. We're just going to go on high heat. And we're just going to go down the line. So we're just going to do each one of these four hinges. Flow it in there. While it's still hot. Work it a little bit to get good coverage. And we're good. Yep, I know what you're doing. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and do this one here. Yep, do this one here. Go ahead and same thing over and over and over again. I have a feeling we're going to speed this section up. This one's got a little bit light on the petroleum jelly, so I'll put a little bit more on. There we go. Flow this last one in here. You can see it liquefying and yeah, going in, yeah. which is pretty cool. There we go. Right there, work a little bit. And our hinges are now ready to be installed. Right. So the next step is we'll get the bench cleaned up. We'll get the plane set up here. Let's go ahead and put that away. And uh, then we'll come back and, and we'll put the hinges in. All right. Cool. Okay, so we got the plane up on the, on the countertop now. And... Uh... Let's continue. We're ready to go. So we discussed it a little bit off camera and I decided to add a little water. So I just uh, took a Q-tip, dipped it in, squeezed it off a little bit. So it was just a little, you know, kind of wrung it out and then just ran it each and out, in and out of each hole just to make sure there's a little moisture in there. So next step, I like to put the hinges in the surface itself first. So you take your Gorilla Glue. I always put an extra set or extra piece of wax paper on the bench. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to put a dot here about the size of a quarter. Doesn't take a lot of Gorilla Glue. That's actually way more than we'll probably end up using on this side. But the reason we do it this way is we just take our hinge here and we just kind of roll it in it. Don't have to go all the way up because it will expand and push its way out. Nice even coat. And then we install. Work it a little bit, just kind of Get it all the way in there, and then we push it in toward about the halfway mark. A lot of people will say you have to make sure this is perpendicular. Not necessary at this point. I'll show you why in a minute here. 
I, I know why, but I'm not saying that's because, right. Because you, know, you well, like direct steps. I know. You're, so I don't want to direct your steps. I appreciate you. Keep quiet. Appreciate you, John. But while I'm here, I can give you a little helpful hint, maybe. You know why you don't now. Go for it. But on the on Gorilla Glue, when you store the Gorilla Glue, store it upside down like this because what happens is that when it hardens, it hardens at the top where the air is at. And so it hardens up here and doesn't block the passage down here. Nice. So whenever you store it, store it upside down like that. Sounds like I need to 3D print myself a, a little storage hole. Oh, that's stand. That's a perfect thing. Yeah, perfect thing to 3D print. And then sell them. And then we'll have them on our website yes, soon. Yes, yes. There we go again, just kind of get a nice little. I like to put a little bit of a glob, another technical term we're using there, at the end, at the end just to make sure we're getting good in, in there. Just make, this one's hey, the last thing you want is these things come out. So, you know, yes. the, the more particular you are and the precise you are on getting the glue in happen. Now, of the course, better. if one comes loose, it's always another video we can make on how to fix loose hinges, but I digress. So that's where, you know, I, I always thought on all these planes, you know, we, we do it this way, but it'd be nice if you had the plane open where you could actually put glue at the end of it. You know, yeah, and let it drop create like glue. a lock. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and lock it in. Or even pins through it. You know, we used to do pins. With through, the flat hinges, through. yep, yeah. definitely. Definitely, there we go. So now we've got them in on the plane side. So now what I like to do is I just use a, an acid brush and just coat the other side. Again, wax paper under every surface just to make sure if it drips, it doesn't... So the acid brush, just because you're going to throw it away. After. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, you can, uh, you know, use the, the bottle and, and put some on, but that just gets a little bit excessive another, usually. Another helpful hint, if you go to the dollar store, they have like uh, 24 of those tiny artist brushes mm -hmm. uh, that you those can get. Work well those work are perfect yep. for that, yeah. Yep, I just, I bought a bunch of these at uh, Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Harbor Freight is the best for throwaway like tools. That, yeah. So again, make sure there's a decent amount on the, towards the end. You don't want it up too close to the knuckle because then it will, if it's going to drip, it's too much. There we go. And it will expand, so we should be should be golden here. Yeah. There we go. We have a little drip there. There we go. Just I go up to about the third barb, leave the end there. There we go. And once you got it all ready to go, set this here out of the way, and then we drip. There we go. That's why we have wax paper, guys. So there you go. Yeah, get them close to lined up. I usually start at one end. Like the bottom. Not the bottom, see so There we go. Look at that, huh? 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 Almost like we know what we're doing. I'll tell you. So, Everyone. we've already got a little bit of a run here because we got a little much, and that happens. Try and push it in about three quarters of the way. See what, what we've got for uh, squish, squish out, or whatever you want to talk, call it. John tries to wreck my workbench. Yeah, yeah, he's trying to throw this airplane on the I ground, am, guys. Yeah, he really cause, is. Because I wasn't around when he crashed the other one, so I got to be... So know, he's mad about it. So we push it together. Now, the reason I said we don't need to uh, make things per uh, perpendicular at the beginning is we take care of that here. Once you deflect this rudder, exactly. it lines up those pins to the hinge line and you're fine. So you just want to deflect it a couple times. It'll also pull them in and out as needed to line up the pin with the hinge line itself. Make sure you're not hitting the ground there. We're good. I was gonna move that out there. Let me pull that out. Not bad idea. It's not necessary now. Yeah. So now we've got it, we've deflected each way a couple times. And what I will do here is we're gonna take our blue tape. Again, I taped this up ahead of time, guys. You know what that's there for. It's just to keep anything that, that comes out from the expansion from from ruining the covering. And it'll keep a nice clean joint. And then we're gonna go ahead and tape this in place with a couple strips of Blue tape. Blue tape. Now the way I do this that works well is cut a piece off about eight, ten inches long. I'll hold it up here because people can't see it. Sorry. Because uh, you're behind. I was holding it over there, but that's fine. So you make about eight, ten inches long, fold an end over so it's easy to easy to peel later. Yeah. There you go. So now you have a, a handle built in. Exactly. Make it, make and then what I do is I'll stick it to here, and then I deflect a little bit towards the tape stick it and that way when i put the on the other side i'm going to pull it and it's going to pull it together Perfect. we're going to do top and bottom and then we'll do top and bottom on this side and we'll be golden oh so you want two more yes sir just one nice even pull oh, that's not enough sorry there we go and this is something you can actually as you do this you can work it in Tighten it down. There we go. And here we go. 
There we go. And now it's pulled together. You're going to leave this for three or four hours. I'll check from time to time, make sure there's not a lot of uh, expansion coming out and oozing down the, the hinge. But then once it's dry, it actually pops off the pops up pretty easy. off the covering pretty easy. Another thing you can do as prep is you could actually take a little bit of the three-in-one oil and just wipe it on the covering, being careful not to get it in the holes. Uh, and that'll keep it from sticking so you can just pop any, any uh, excess that oozes out off. So there you go. We have hinged the, uh, the rudder on the Extreme Flight Yak. We're one step closer. Yep. So uh, getting closer so we can have uh, you know something in the air pretty soon, which is what we're looking forward to. Yeah. yeah that'd be cool. Do some more 3D how-to. This should be a 3D monster. That's right. All right. So hinging your rudder, how to do it with Gorilla Glue. Uh, we'll have the next video coming out where we're going to show you a different method or a different type of glue, actually, yep. to use for hinging your elevators and steps.